Good day. Hello, everyone. How are you? Jeff Osborne back with Jeff of All Trades. I am super excited about today's show. I get asked this question all the time, and I have yet to find one that has been able to take care of all of the needs and services uh, myself and my clients have requested. Today's show is about property management. We're talking to one of the best, the biggest property management companies today. They're going to go over uh, and answer questions. We're going to get down to the, to the best parts, uh, to the cost, to you know maybe some funny stories, and really how they protect you and when you're renting a property uh, so you don't get taken advantage of or lose rent and more money in your pocket. I have the pleasure of speaking with Michael Kraus with Atrium Management Group. How are you today? Doing great. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks for having me on the show. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What a lot of people don't know is we actually live very close to each other, but I don't think his office is very close uh, to where we are because he seems to be out of state all the time. But um, uh, but yes, we, we live very close to each other. So, Michael, tell us a little bit about yourself. Tell us how long you've been in the property management business and, and kind of what got you into that direction. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, my name is Michael Kraus. Uh, Jeff's right at our office is it's not too far away. It's in Lake Mary, Florida. My company is Atrium Management Company. Uh, so I got started in property management in 2003. I was, I actually started out as a service tech. So I had no idea what to do. I was uh, fresh out of college over at Ohio State um, and picked up a screwdriver and a wrench at Home Depot. And the next day, uh, got started as a service technician. Quickly kind of rose up the ranks with a big company called Ainco out of Colorado. Uh, in 2008, my, com- my portfolio was bought out by uh, JRK Residential. So I worked for another large property management company out of Los Angeles. Um, and then in 2014, my business partner, Adam, and I purchased the company that we own and manage now, Atrium Management Company, um, <clears throat> and been doing that ever since. So uh, I love property man- management, easy business. Definitely don't recommend it if you're doing it part-time or or uh, just as a side gig, it definitely is a, a full-time, 24-7 job. But uh, love it and uh, here to stay. It was 2009 when I decided that it was I was definitely going to be doing this for the rest of my life. So it took me uh, eight or nine years to, or I'm sorry, six six or seven years before uh, I realized that this is what I was going to do. So, uh, but anyway, yeah, that's a little background on myself. Wow, that there was a lot of information that you made sound really, really easy. You went. <laughs> Bought some tools and then fast forward, bought a property ma- or in, in, uh, created a property management company, and now you're a property management company. But you're not a tiny one; you're a big one, and that's um, that's what I kind of want to talk about. But man, that is a crazy story. So you started from the bottom and worked your way up. There you go. Started from the bottom and really yeah. all like everything, like from yeah. So I think it's been beneficial to me in my career to to rise up through the ranks to start out as a maintenance tech. Um, cause I've always understood that side of the business. So when it comes to a repair, I get it. You know, I used to do that. Um, I did that for a pretty short period of time. I was in maintenance. I was a maintenance tech for a year. Then the maintenance supervisor, property manager. So it's only two out of my, you know, 16 years in the career. Uh, but you know, it's still, it's been good. So yeah, the last time when I was managing for JRK residential, I was uh, flying up and down the whole East coast, managing a ton of units for them. Um, and, uh, it, it got to be the point I had a child. And, uh, at that time, my wife said time to settle down, time to stop traveling so much that we started looking for different options. Um, that's when my business partner, Adam and I started to look for businesses to buy. He was with Wells Fargo at the time, um, wow. in small business lines. So he, he knew how to buy and sell companies. Um, so, and I knew how to do property management. So it was, uh, it worked out well. Um, so yeah, and you're right. A lot of, a lot of, a lot of stuff in between there. A lot of leases and a lot of evictions and a lot of, uh, experiences, fires, uh, everything like that. Um, <clears throat> before 2014 when we bought Atrium, um, and obviously a ton of experiences since then, but yeah, that's the, that's the long and the short of it. Wow. It's been good. We could talk about that by itself. I mean, there's just so much there. Let me ask you a question. How, um, how many States is Atrium in? And then how many properties are y'all managing? And, and I know, to me, I think of homes when someone says property management, but that's only a very minute piece. There's apartment buildings, there's condos, there's condo associations. So tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so um, 
So HM is actually only in Central Florida. I've managed properties in 22 of the 50 states in America, um, but our our company right now only services Florida. Um, we have properties down in Miami. Um, we have about 1,500 doors that we manage right now. Um, we say doors because it, there's, you know, obviously it's a little bit different when you're dealing with single family homes and multifamily properties. So it just got easier to say instead of saying properties or houses or doors or condos, we just say doors. So um, of those, about 900 of those are single family type residences. Wow. So that's either going to be a condo, a house, um, you know, but we also manage about 600 multifamily units which uh, obviously the state of Florida, you know, considers anything over four units multifamily. Um, so we have properties that range in size from uh, 128 or 148 units uh, down to, you know, we own a five black stuff in the land that we manage. Um, so that's uh, that's kind of what our, our company make up there. So you're not scared to manage anything, no matter how big, no matter how small, 130 units, no big deal. Yeah, so definitely not. I mean, my world, I came from managing multifamily property, so I don't, I'm not intimidated by that. Um, we haven't broken into that market, uh, in terms of large, or like I said, our largest uh, property is 148 doors, but there's nothing that's stopping us from doing that. We'd love to move into that, uh, that third party management and, uh, of, of the larger complexes, you know. So yeah, absolutely. And I, I think what a lot of people don't know, and I'm just learning this now, uh, of course, realtor, full-time real estate agent, if someone doesn't know, Jeff of all trades, I'm a full-time realtor. I have uh, a lender that buys properties and clients that buy properties, either uh, two, a duplex or a 16-unit building. And what I didn't realize is, is when you buy that property, you don't go manage it. You either It either has a management company that's leasing it, that is that does everything, or you find one, and in this case, let's say they didn't have one, you would be that person that would come in and lease the building, le lease it, do everything, correct? Like you would take care of all of that. Yeah. That would be like a package deal that you yeah. do for the, like how, how would that work? So let's say I had, a, uh, let's just say a 20 unit apartment complex, a 20 yeah. unit apartment complex. And I'm like, yeah, so I don't know what to do, I just bought it, I got a crazy good deal, what do I do next? Yeah. Yeah, so 20 unit is typically not going to have on-site staff. Usually um, above 50 units, you kind of get into that realm where it might make sense to have an on-site manager, an on-site maintenance person. Um, but at 20, you're almost never going to have an on-site staff member. So um, that, that fee structure is a little different. But we come in and we do the whole thing from you, or for you. So we list the property for rent. We find, we screen the tenants. We draft the leases. Um, once the tenants are in place, we collect the rent. We handle evictions if they don't pay. We deliver notices if they're, you know, if they're causing issues. Um, you know, and then obviously we handle the maintenance on the property. So we handle all of the repairs. I take, you know, emergency service calls on the weekend. We have an emergency line that's available 24 hours a day to handle all that stuff for you. Um, and that on those 20 unit properties are all handled remotely right here out of our office in Lake Mary or our downtown office on Orange Ave. Um, so basically, um, you know, that's that's the smaller units up to probably 50, 60 units. We're not going to have on site staff. We're just going to manage it remotely different fee structure. Um, if there's on-site staff, like let's say you have a hundred unit property, that's definitely going to have, you know, at least a manager, a leasing manager, a leasing agent, and most of the time a service manager, sometimes a service tech also, um, you know, and they're going to be on-site and we manage that employee. Fee structure is different. We take a percentage of total income, um, but we don't make any money on like the leasing and anything like that. Um, all of the salaries for the on-site is passed directly to the investor, to the owner of that property. Um, so, yeah, we do third-party management for investors from all over the world. We have uh, investors in Singapore, uh, Israel, Canada, UK, all over the place. Um, you know, so we do third-party management for them. What it allows them to do is focus on what they want to do, which is just uh, manage their asset, just buy an asset. They can focus on finding new properties as opposed to getting stuck in the day-to-day -day and dealing with, a clogged toilet at midnight on a Friday night. Uh, we handle all that for them. Um, and of course we have all the technology in place to be able to report out, provide them what they need for their financials um, and be, be able to effectively manage that asset from wherever they are in the world. Um, yeah, but you're right also, there are a lot of uh, owner operators out there, companies that buy properties and then they have their own management company in place. So, um, you know, we like to be them at one point. Um, you know, we do manage, we do manage our own properties that we own. Um, between my partner and I, we own about 300 doors. Um, you know, so we, we have a, we have a large. 
between you and your partner, you have 300 doors. Is that 300 yeah. doors included into your 1500 number? Yeah, that's included in there. Yeah, we can't, we can't. That, we can't. That's a huge deal, man. Like 300 rental properties between you and another person. That's good. That's not doing, that's, that's pretty good. That's good. How yeah. long did it take you to get to that number? Is that like, did, were you buying them, but when you were with tech or how many years have you been looking at that? No, definitely not. So my, I bought my first rental property in 2016. Um, Adam's been investing in real estate and buying rental properties since I think, I want to say 2012, but don't quote me on that. So right around there. So, so you've been looking into it since 2012 and you pulled the trigger on one in 2016. So me personally, I pulled the trigger on one in 2016. Adam's been buying, he's been investing in real estate since 2012. Nice. So, nice. Yeah. It's good when there's two. Um, yeah. You know, you can buy more. Wow. They're probably getting a little personal, but that's, dude, that's, hats off to you. Hats off to you. Thanks. Thanks. That's there are awesome. a lot of people doing a lot better and a lot bigger things than we are. So, but I appreciate that, Jeff. <laughs> you know what? There, there, there are, but there, yeah. we don't know who they are. It's, yeah. you know, and if we, you know, I know a couple of, I'm not saying I don't know who they are, but they're not like just, you know, we might, they, they might not have time to be on a podcast. You know, they, they might, they, they, to them, things teaching other people might not be as important. They're like, oh, I have a thousand units or 1500 units. I listen to a lot of different other podcasts in different states where mm -hmm. buying investment properties are a lot easier than buying in Florida. Florida mm -hmm. is not an easy market to tap into because of the up and down. You go in the middle of the country, you can get insane deals for 50, 60 grand duplexes that over mm -hmm. here are 300,000. Right. Uh, going back to what you're saying about a fee structure, I don't know how much you can tell me or not tell me, but to get to the cost of it, um, what, what is your, well, I'll ask two questions. Sure. Let's say I have a residential home. It's about mm -hmm. 2,000. Um, let, let's say the rent, you know, let's say the rent's 2,400. Residential, I need someone to move in. I, I have it. I just bought another one. I, I never done this before. I need you to rent that out. And then let's say I have um, like a, uh, I don't want like a full staff, but let's say I had one of those uh, 20, 20 unit buildings. So if I said, how, you know, I, I don't know if you can't give exact numbers. I know that, but just like a rough ballpark, what would I be looking at? I'm renting a property. And then what would I be looking at? I'm managing the 20 unit duplex. Sure. So kind of industry standard, um, and I think I'm allowed to say it, but kind of the industry standard out there has always been there's an upfront leasing fee um, uh, for single family homes, <coughs> condos, duplexes. There's an upfront leasing fee to find the tenant. It goes towards advertising, you know, pre-moving inspection, preparing a lease, application screening, all that stuff. Um, and typically the industry standard is one month rent. Um, you know, we discount that down and we'll go lower than that depending on the area. We may have five homes in that neighborhood already. So we're willing to, to take a little bit of a discounted rate, um, to, to manage that property because there's not the, the, there's a lot, there's, there's a profitability and scale. If we're in the neighborhood five times, you know, it doesn't cost us much. If we're going to be there already, you know, it's so it, it saves us time and money. Um, so we're able to discount that down. Uh, monthly management, the typical kind of industry standard is 10% of, of the rent is the management fee. Um, again, we're willing to discount that down from time to time, uh, depending on the quality of the asset, location, you know, like I said before, if we have other assets in that neighborhood. The last and most common fee in property management is the renewal fee, and that's when the lease comes after, you know, nine or 10 months after the lease comes due, um, the tenants are planning on either staying or moving out. Um, if they renew, we charge a renewal fee. Um, and that varies drastically between management companies, um, you know, and, and I, I couldn't even give you a ballpark. Some companies charge nothing. Some companies call it charge a whole month's rent, um, you know, For, so uh, just to just to stay just to stay in the property. Just a, a lot of times they'll do renewal inspections. We do a full on renewal inspection. We send you, let's say you're in the UK. They're charging the investor. They're charging the investor a renewal fee. Correct. Yeah. It charges uh, to, the, to the homeowner, to the landlord. Um, you know, they, they, they go do an inspection. So if you're in the UK or if you're in Dubai, you know, you're getting a report, seeing how your asset looks, you know, making sure there's no deferred maintenance. Um, there's negotiating in, involved in that. And then there's obviously drafting, signing, preparing the lease. Um, so um, there's always a, a renewal it's fee. Not, it, it's not always. Some, there's not, unless, it's not always. Standard. Unless it's local, walk in the park, um, you know, stuff like that. 
that okay. Yeah, I mean, you always get like I'm sure you, as a realtor, I'm sure you don't charge the cheapest price for listing the home and, and selling a home or right. So so but I, there are people out there who are they there's to, always people they, out there that are willing, I'm willing to do something lower. But yeah, you're you know you're you're right. Um, yeah, everybody knows that. Yeah. So, um, you know, we uh, and then on the multifamily side, 20 units, um, typically the fees are the same, meaning, um, you know, it's still a leasing fee, a management fee and a renewal fee for each of those units. That being said, um, it, it, you'll di will discount the prices down depending on the size of the asset. You know, uh, a 40 unit complex, obviously, we're going to be there a lot. So there's money in scale. Um, versus a five unit complex, which is practically just like a house. You know what I mean? It's not that much different. So the fees go up depending on, on, or up or down, depending on how big it is, how much the rent is. You know, if we're renting out $3,000 a month apartments, you know, our, our, our fee on that upfront fee for the, for the, you know, based on the one month's rent is going to be a lot higher on that $3,000 rent than if it's an $800 a month apartment. You know, but a lot of times they take the same amount of work. So again, on some of those higher end assets, you might be willing to, to reduce, property managers might be willing to reduce their rates, um, you know, based on those factors. Interesting, interesting. Going back to the residential, just because that's what I know and that's what I see and that's what I've done. Yeah. You said uh, this company standard is normally the first month's rent covers that. Now, um, it, it, do you have a real, like you're, you're, are y'all, you're a licensed realtor, correct? Correct. Yeah. To, to be a property manager in the state of Florida, you have to be a licensed real estate agent. Correct. So you actually lease, you lease the unit out yourself. Correct. Y'all list it on the MLS mm -hmm. and put it on Zillow, put it on everywhere. And then uh, what a lot of people don't know is, is there's realtors out there that just help renters and they get, you know, 200, three, they get whatever that the, the, the management company, I would assume. Referral commission or whatever it is. And it's not much. It's not, it's like 200, 500, yeah. 500. <laughs> I gave 400 to somebody and they looked at me like I was God. And I was like, oh, I thought that was a little bit because I was helping them sell and buy. I didn't care. I just needed it rented so we can close the deal, you know, yeah. but, um, but I think. Yeah, so that's, that's, that's a good point. Yeah. Um, we uh, we actually pay for, per the industry standard. We pay really well. So if you were to bring one of your potential tenants to our house and show our house, we would actually split our commission with you. Oh wow, that's a little rare. So if we make two thousand dollars on the deal, you can get a thousand of it. And that's um, so, that's that rent. So that so yeah, rent is you can you can figure it out twenty one hundred twenty whatever. It's, yeah, so some it's it's a rough ballpark, but yeah, so. Um, and then, uh, you know, but most companies, if you know, they're just going to pay you a hundred dollars or $150 or, you know, $200 referral commission. Um, if you just send a buyer over their way, <clears throat> so we're a little bit better than the industry standard there. We like to have relationships with realtors because you all are our best source of new business on the single family home side. Um, we love working with realtors. So we'd like to also reward you guys if you bring, you know, help to our business. Um, so that's why, that's why we've always paid 50% of the commissions out to you guys. So if a realtor like myself had a buyer, which I had someone call yesterday, on one of my properties in Winter Springs, and they wanted to rent it, and I don't specialize in renting, I don't know, I know what I could do, but I don't, I'm not trying to do that. How would someone like me, what would we do? We'd just send you, like text you or email you that, would you be interested in that person's contact? If I said, hey, I have a property management company that could you know, find you a place, would you be yeah. interested in that? So we like uh, it, that's a tougher one for us. Those are those are you know we'll take those, especially for you know someone like you that we value your partnership, um, and we'll try to help them. But right now, <clears throat> I think there's three thousand houses on the market for rent in Orlando, and we have fifty five. Oh, yeah. So you know what I mean. There's a lot of selection out there, and we don't show other people's properties just because it's not profitable. We lose money if we go get a hundred dollar commission because we place the tenant in another rental property, rental company's property. So, you know, we don't do that. And, that, um, and that's not what you do. You're not a real, you're a realtor, but you're a management company. And yeah. your, your, your biggest ask, like that's not being your, to your investor, to your landlord. They're not hiring you to go do that. Right. You know, so that's not what yeah. you do as a Yeah, you're exactly that's right. We have what you would do. Yeah, we have a fiduciary responsibility to the owners of the properties that we have on the market. And none to the other owners out there, the other 2,950 owners out there that aren't ours. 
So yes, um, you hit the nail on the head with that. Um, that being said, especially for clients and friends, you know, um, people that we work with, partners in the business, uh, we will help out as much as we can. We'll talk, talk to them about areas. We'll review leases. We'll help them with, you know, crazy questions. Um, uh, that being said, uh, we, tr- we tend to not show other people's properties um, just for that reason. But it's not, it's been done. We do it from time to time. You know, if this person is, you know, somebody that we really want to help, we'll, we'll definitely do it. So, And I'm sure that you have the reverse uh, process where you might know someone wanting to sell a property and you know, you need, you, you, and I don't know if you all specialize in listing or selling the properties, you need an agent to do so, you know? Yeah. Um, and, and I've ran into, I'll say two things. I uh, messed up and, and I wish I would have known more about your company, but I used, I referred to another company and mm-hmm. it did that one month thing. And I, and I gave almost half of it to the other, uh, or close to half of it to the other buyer. Um, and they, I think they ended up paying like a bonus, but they, um, they didn't, I don't think they had any fees. They did everything. Everything had to go through them. It was the worst uh, experience. They, yeah. they, I, they had all these hidden things that they're hiding and they weren't there. They, it, it was a nightmare. And, and that's actually when I reached out to you. I think this was almost like nine or seven months ago. And I'm like, is this normal? Should yeah. I be going through this? So th- there's management companies that are supposedly huge and big management companies but you really want to deal with someone that is here locally, if you can, um, that knows what's going on. Everybody that was dealing with this property were in Jacksonville. They were two hours away, and no one was on the same page, um, and, and no one should have to go through that. So if you have a management company and you feel like you're pulling your hair out, that's why I have Michael on today. <laughs> that's why I'm talking to them, because that's not the success uh, that you want to go through. It, it needs to be smooth. Uh, it needs to be easy for you. Um, now I do have, yeah. uh, did you want to add anything to that before I get to my next question? Yeah, no, that's, that's, that's a good point. So yeah, you had mentioned at the beginning of that, uh, about, do we do sales? Do we focus on that stuff? That's one of the things that's unique about HRM. We don't do any sales. Um, so we do have a lot of referral partners out there that we send business to realtors and, um, <clears throat> you know, we don't get as many of that because a lot of times our business comes from realtors. So if you send us a property, uh, when that tenant goes to move out, we're going to send it right back to you. So a lot of times our biggest source of business goes right back out to the people who gave it to us in the first place. Uh, but that's one of the things that's nice for you guys to know on your side of the business. If you refer somebody to them, we're not going to build a relationship over the next two to three years and then go sell their property behind your back. We send them right back to you. Um, the other thing that's a little bit unique, if you do send us properties, um, we pay a nice referral commission, which I've heard from industry experts that that's not, that doesn't make sense. You shouldn't do that. You're just throwing money away. I have a, me and my business partner, Adam, we have a different belief. Um, again, we like to keep realtors happy and we want to work with a lot of realtors. So if you send us a property managed, and we lease that property out, we'll send you a $500 check. Um, you know, so you get a nice referral bonus. Um, helpfully send us more. Um, and then again, you know that on the back end, we're going to call you and you say, hey, Jeff, the tenant's moving out. You might want to reach out to this owner, um, this landlord, and see if they're interested in selling their property. Uh, so that's the only thing I'll add on that, that, that subject. And you won't stress the seller or the realtor out and yeah. have a heart attack once everything starts going crazy over nothing. We had it, we had the best tenant. It was it shouldn't have been this difficult, but um, but it the management company there is a good way, there's a bad way, and I hate to say it, but a lot of these management companies are just run really thin. They're run yeah. very very thin, and they have one person doing ten jobs, and that's not the way to do it. Um, yeah, yeah, no, you're you're 100 correct. It's one of the issues in our industry is just quality of service. <clears throat> uh, one of my good buddies in uh, in Birmingham, Alabama, likes to say that his company is like a six out of ten. They've got a lot of room to grow, uh, you know. But he says, but the good news is his competition's all threes out of ten. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, there's a lot of bad management companies. There's a lot of good ones too. I could give you a list of ten that I would give my properties to here in Orlando. Uh, but you know, at the same time. Uh, there's definitely a different level of service. So you want to make sure you get a good one. Don't ever pay the bottom line price. If you pay in the cheapest price, you're getting the cheapest service. That's just how it goes. So so two questions. Back to the residential, because that's kind of what I know the most, and we might be getting the most listeners on. And if uh-huh. the Michael's information is going to be in the details, please reach out to him for any questions, uh, for pricing, anything, all of his info, in it, or you can reach out to me and I can link you up. Um, What's the industry standard for a residential property, a monthly fee? 
I know it used to be 10%, which I don't think it still is. Are you able to say like a number on? Yeah. Industry standard is still 10%. I mean, that's just what the, like if you, like if you go to poll, you know, the best management companies in town and look at the guys who have the, the 4.7 star ratings on Google and, uh, you know, the offer the good service. If you, if you want good service, it's still probably going to be 10%, eight or 9% minimum. Um, <clears throat> there are companies out there that do it for less. I know some that do flat fee management. So a hundred dollars a month. Um, you know, there's some that do flat, but I can tell you, I can tell you, at, our company, if we did that, we would not be profitable. We'd lose a lot of money. And so you can't sustain the same level of service. We'd have to cut back staff, just like you're talking about, if we wanted to lower our fees to where some of these, the, the bottom bottom of the barrel people are. So, you know, to me, um, industry standard still 10%. You can get discounts from there. Um, but just be aware, just be weary of what you're, what you're getting for what you're paying. So, for example... Let's say I, let's say we're renting a $2,000 a month, you know, single family house, right? If I rent that property out for you at $2,200 a month because I push it, you know, your management fee at 10% is going to be $200 a month. But if some other management company comes in, they're like, yeah, I'll dump manage your property for 50 bucks a month. But then they're like, they're, they don't market it as well. They don't show it as well. They don't, you know, they, they want to get it rented fast. So it's not on the market. They're trying to, and they rent it out for eighteen hundred. You know that's a four hundred dollar a month swing. So yeah, you save yourself one hundred and fifty bucks a month on my management fee versus the guy who's doing it for fifty bucks. But you just cost yourself two hundred and fifty dollars in extra income. You know what I mean? That you could have made, and that's three thousand dollars a year. That's a huge chunk of money. You don't want the buy, You don't want the lowest quality service because you, you're, you're going to end up paying for it. Um, you know, you get a lower quality tenant in there uh, that damages the property. Um, don't, you know, pay, pay up. You don't drive the cheapest car. You don't live in the cheapest neighborhood. You don't dress in the cheapest clothes. You know, pay, make sure you do your research. Make sure the company is reputable. Make sure they have good reviews from their owners and the tenants on, online. Um, and if you do that, uh, you'll be a lot better off. Base it on that stuff. Buy it like you would a car. Don't buy your property manager like you would, uh, you know, like what, looking for the cheapest price. You're going to get the cheapest investment. This is something that yeah. you can stay nice and pretty and shiny. So you mm -hmm. can sell it. It's not something that can decrease in value. Um, yeah, you definitely don't want to let it keep going down. Each time a tenant comes in, if you don't do a good turn and get it back to good, it's just going to continue. You do, you know, the first one does some damage. The second one, you're going to get a lower quality tenant that damages the property even more. Now you're, you know, now your turn is going to be $4,000. You know, and all that profit you save from what, you know, from getting a little bit of a cheaper management company is going to, it's going to be wiped out. Um, Good answer. Okay. Yeah. And check to see if they have an address that you can go to and it's not a PO box and it's local. So if you have an issue, you can go talk to Michael personally. And I'm sure with that 10% fee guys, you know, um, like he's saying, he's not, he said this a couple times and I appreciate that. It's your numbers aren't fixed. You know, hey, if you're in a situation, you'll help. You know, we'll you know ask us to see if we can do something. You're not going to just you know not listen. You'll say, hey, there might be something we can do there. We might be able to lower the fee, or we might be able to figure out a way for you to still make the money that you need to make, and for us to still do our job. So, um, and that's what I like about Michael is he's he started from the bottom as we're hearing, so he knows how it is. It's it's rough, especially when you get your first, second, third property. And then you start learning on how to make it easier and how to prevent things from breaking and buying new instead of buying used. And that way, it's going to last a lot longer. So that was a good answer. Real good answer. Thanks. Appreciate it. Okay. One more. I, I know we're running out of time. I, I, I know I have a very limited time with you. This is the biggest question. I think this is why people pay the management company the most money. What happens when someone doesn't pay rent? How many days do they get away with it? I'm going to give you two scenarios. I'm going to have a lady. She has two kids. She's the nicest lady, but she's behind on her rent, and it's she, she hasn't made her rent. It's been 28 days. The second scenario is super nice lady, has two kids. She is, um, she, she's only been, she's 30 days behind. She's only been able to make half the rent. She's only, I don't even know if you take that. So kind of help me understand that. I've heard both of these scenarios. So, yeah. which when would we evict? How fast can we evict? And do you give any leeway? So whether the tenant's nice or not, or how many kids they have, doesn't matter to me. Doesn't matter. Uh, just right off the bat, yeah. 
But um, good, good answer. <laughs> <laughs> Bring that soft story. When they're behind on rent, so for us, we're pretty strict. Um, when it comes to delinquency, which is what we call it as a global, you know, kind of number at our company um, and the industry standard. When it comes to delinquency, like the stricter you are, the better off you're going to be. So if you give that person, you know, a week to pay rent this next month, this next month they're going to take two weeks. You know, if you let them push out to the 15th and you're like, come on, man, come on, Brent, just give me my payment. I'm a, I just, I'll let you stay just, and then the next month is going to be the 20th. And then like you're saying, you're going to get to the 28th to the 30th. Um, so for us on our leases, rent is due on the first, it's late after the third. So on the fourth, they get a notice on their door, posted to their door. That's a three day notice. It says three days to pay your rent or get out of the property. Wow. That's just an industry standard. It sounds hardcore, but that's it. That's, that's how it works. Who makes um, that? Who gets that who, notice? Do you already we, have the, okay. Yeah. We, we make the, we handle all that stuff for you. So it's, you have an attorney that is. Part yeah, we have an, it's an attorney prepared document. We fill one in each time. That, so. Because no one, I can't do that, right? Me, yeah. as a landlord, I just can't go print a three day notice out online and tape it to the door because I might have a smart renter that can call my bluff. Yeah, yeah. So um, that notice gets delivered. Um, three day expires. Um, yeah, no, it's, <clears throat> it's three business days. So you got to take out holidays and weekends. And the date of service also doesn't count. <clears throat> so. If you delivered a notice today on the 17th, which is a Tuesday, um, you know, that notice would expire on Friday. Date, today's date wouldn't count. So the three days. And, and if so, the, the 21st, 22nd roll around, you can follow that eviction on the 23rd, um, which is Monday. Okay. Uh, so basically, um, you send it over to the attorney um, and, you know, they, they handle it from there. It's a fairly inexpensive process. Um, you know, usually four to six hundred dollars, depending on if the tenant fights it, shows up, or if the resident fights it, shows up, yada, yada, yada. There's, you know, a couple of different things that can drive the price up. It's fairly inexpensive. Usually it takes 30 to 45 days. Um, Florida is a pretty landlord friendly state, which is nice. Um, <clears throat> so, but it's a smooth, clean process. It should never get to the point where the person's 30 days out and hasn't paid rent, um, you know, unless unless there's some extenuating circumstance. I can think of a few things like, you know, let's say, anyway. But regardless, you don't want to get into that mess. You should be as strict as possible. You should deliver the three-day notice. You know, you have you have somebody that you deliver a three-day notice to, and then, you know, you file an eviction, and if they're really able to make it back, that person will probably never let that happen again because it's painful. <clears throat> the, the resident has to pay for that uh, eviction f- filing fee from the attorney. Oh. You know, to get out of it, and they pay for the late fee, and they pay for the rent. So all of a sudden, you know, a thousand dollar rent turns into a two thousand dollar payment, and they're making sure the next month that they're on time. It doesn't always work that way. Sometimes you have to get them out, but if you do, um, <clears throat> you know. Uh, and, and honestly, just another thought: uh, an ounce of prevention is is definitely worth it in this case. If you just screen your tenants properly, there's no reason we should be having this conversation with you. If we screen your tenants properly. We, we shouldn't be talking about evictions. Um, you know, our minimum standards for qualific- for qualifying to lease a property like a house, like, you know, a $2,000 house, um, our eviction percentage is less than one-tenth of one percent. Wow. Um, on our single-family homes, portfolios that, you know, when we screen everybody properly. Um, so we shouldn't be worried about that. Um, it, it shouldn't happen very often. Really when it's fairly quick, clean process, we handle it all. And wh- how many days do you wait to put the three day? Is there like a 10 day grace period or say that again? Yeah, our lease um, is there's a there's a rent is due on the first. It's late after the third. So on the fourth, we deliver a notice. Wow. So there's not even a tip. Yeah. So, Got it. Okay. So our multifamily, we have some multifamily clients that there's no grace period. Rent's due on the first, late on the second. Three days get delivered on the second. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. Nice. Those, typically, they, those portfolios have the smallest amount of delinquency, literally almost zero delinquency. And you do it like that, right? Because if you didn't, they would just take a, they would take advantage of the being able to pay it later. Like if it was the, if you did the tenth, then you would be getting paid on the, the, the rents would be getting paid on the tenth if you had that in there. Like yeah. why it's like this is because with with a mortgage company, you actually have a little bit more lenient. You can be late. And then you need to miss a couple payments, but it's not you, you, you know it's not a mortgage company. So yeah. I, I never I never thought of it like that. That's that's pretty good. 
So it's interesting. I mean, I always use this analogy. You know, let, let's say rent's two thousand dollars, right? And you're the landlord. It's your business. You know, if that if that resident stole two thousand dollars from you by not paying rent, he's taking the product. He's using your house, and now he's not giving you two thousand bucks. Imagine if you walked into Best Buy and just walked out with a two thousand dollar TV. Are they going to give you thirty days to pay for that TV before they take you to jail? No. Nope. Are they going to give you forty five days? No. I mean, literally, landlord tenant law is one of the loosest laws there is out there. Uh, they're literally stealing money from you and your family um, that you know from your investment uh, by not paying their rent. It's not. It's not fair. So we're we have a very strict policy on that. That's man. You know, I would love to do a podcast just about that. I get asked that the most. I've heard so many conflicting stories. You've made it sound the easiest. I always rep- I always recommend go talk to someone that's done it and go talk to an attorney and everybody wants to do it on their own to try to save the money. And then they are out three or four months of rent. You're saying 30 to 45 days at the most, the person's out of there is because you have a proven system and there's an easy way for this. And I think a hangar management company and, 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 you know, you getting more money. So if you do have a cap that you're trying to keep it at or a budget, you know, you, this is, you, you don't need to focus on, are they going to pay rent? Are they going to pay rent? There's a, you have someone else focusing on that and you can spend your time, like you're saying, finding other properties, let your money grow and then go find other things to buy and let that grow. Yep. Absolutely. Great. Great. Um, I think we're out of time that, that I, we covered a lot. We covered a lot more than I was expecting. Um, Michael, is there anything you wanted to add uh, before I jump off? No, absolutely. Thanks for having me on, Jeff. It's been a pleasure. We, like I said, we love working with realtors. You, I know you're one of the good ones. Good job out there taking care of your clients, uh, not reducing fees, and uh, just making sure you know you, you keep the industry the way that it should be, You know, high service, high level of service. So appreciate you having me on. It's been a pleasure. And if anybody has any questions, uh, like Jeff said, he'll put my information out there. My email address, our, our company's website is patreonmanagement.com. Um, you know, we do this for a living. It's, I know it's a little bit weird, but we love it. Uh, if you ever have questions about how to get into the investing in real estate, um, I love having those questions. So, or I love talking about it. So and it, this is what we do. And, and if you want to, we'll do another podcast. We'll, we'll chit chat about that. But uh, guys, if y'all want to hear him talk more about evicting and, and being smart about that and or getting into property management, let me know. And we'll set up another show so we can we can educate more people. Again, Jeff of All Trades, today is about property management. We had Michael with Atrian Property Man- uh, Pro- uh, Management Company, um, local company, uh, the best that I know out there. Uh, thank you for listening, and I'll see you next week.